Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. Much has been said about how 5G will change our lives, but a lot of the talk has been unclear or piecemeal at best. In this video, I'm going to give you the truth about 5G, including how it is different from 4G, why it matters to you, and how it is tied to digital infrastructure. You might actually be able to cut through all the hype and other garbage you hear in the news about 5G. So stay tuned, and I will break this all down for you. Before I do, be sure to subscribe to the DGTL Infra channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss my next in-depth video that is coming out soon. Now, let's jump into the video. So 5G stands for fifth generation wireless technology, following 4G and 3G. Each generation of technology gets faster, more reliable, and every G has changed our lives in both small and big ways. 3G brought internet and email to our phones, and 4G allowed for things like rideshare apps and streaming video. Let's walk through some of the meaningful breakthroughs from 4G so we remember where it has taken us. First is mobile gaming. 4G allowed us to have internet connectivity on our mobile devices that facilitated games like Candy Crush, Clash of Clans, and Pokemon Go. Next is mapping. We no longer use paper maps, we use Apple Maps, Waze, and Google Maps all on our phones and never have to think again about the direction of where we want to go to. Mobile payments was an incredible breakthrough because it allowed us to transfer money very easily to our friends and family. Think about PayPal, Venmo, and Zelle, which allow for quick transfers of money, whether it's for a meal or rent payment. Next is music streaming which brought us the likes of Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music. No longer do we have to load MP3s onto our device, we can just choose the songs we want to listen to on the go. Next is ride-hailing services. So if we think about platforms like Uber, Lyft, and Grab, they've all made it much easier to get where we want to go without having to own or be with your car at all times. And finally is video calling or video conferencing. And so we're using Skype, FaceTime, and Zoom video to communicate in a much richer form than we used to. And that can all be done on a mobile basis. So what is 5G? And what does it offer beyond these 4G use cases? 5G technology is a combination of software algorithms, firmware, and new hardware. So therefore, in order to run 5G, you need to get a new device or a new piece of hardware like the iPhone 12 or Samsung Galaxy S20. 5G will be one of the critical enabling technologies that eventually brings us autonomous vehicles and autonomous drones. However, the benefits of 5G go much further, deeper, and more provocative, which we'll discuss now. So there are a tremendous amount of improvements from 4G technology to 5G technology, and we'll walk through some of the key improvements now as it relates to your experience and also the enhancement of businesses going forward. So first is lower latency. 5G networks deliver five to 10 times lower latency. 5G provides five milliseconds of over the air latency, a meaningful decrease as compared to 4G networks, which provide latency levels of 50 to 100 milliseconds. This means instantaneous, always on and always connected networks. Low latency means that the time frame between initiating a command and then it actually executing and being visible to a user can almost be real time. So specifically, it's the effective signaling time between the cloud response to a phone or a phone response to the cloud and the user getting the signal back in the other direction. So if we start to think about some of the consumer focused applications that lower latency brings us, First is cloud or mobile gaming. So no longer do all of the components of a large application need to be loaded directly onto the device, but rather much of it can be streamed wirelessly as the user is playing that game. Another consumer use case is streaming video on your phone instantaneously with no buffering. Latency reduction is especially important for new use cases like augmented reality and virtual reality where lag times in signals can provide a literally dizzying experience for people. And a use case like gaming on a console, like a PlayStation or Xbox, will become more sophisticated with this virtual reality. 
So for example, gaming will be better able to incorporate gesturing as opposed to relying solely on gaming controllers for user input. When a user swipes their hand in the air, they're gonna want instantaneous movement on the screen. In order to get that reaction, latency needs to be improved and can be done so through 5G. If we think about what latency brings to business applications, common themes here are in smart manufacturing and robotics. So it allows workloads from machinery, sensors, and devices to be placed onto the network. Since latency in 5G is less than 10 milliseconds, applications can run on the device or they can run on the network. Because it's more cost efficient, applications will gravitate to run on the network. By removing applications from the device, it allows devices to become cheaper because not as much computing power is needed on the device itself. Moving to the next key improvement area for 5G, number two, is increased speed. So 5G speeds have the potential to reach 10 gigabits per second, which compared to 4G could be 100 times faster. If we think about the 4G LTE network speeds today, these network speeds are currently 50 to 70 megabits per second. In 5G, there are really three different types of bands. First is low band 5G, an example of which is 600 megahertz spectrum from T-Mobile. This low band spectrum offers only modest improvements of speed. So think about 100 megabits per second and above. But this 5G service is more for coverage purposes. And that's why low band is used as a nationwide 5G service that is accessible to more than 200 million people in the United States currently. The next type of 5G spectrum is called mid band. And an example of this is two and a half gigahertz spectrum. T-Mobile is also deploying two and a half gigahertz mid-band spectrum, and they are currently achieving peak speeds of between 600 to 700 megabits per second, and average speeds of 300 to 400 megabits per second. So a significant increase from 4G LTE. Think about double those speeds. And mid-band is currently being rolled out in more of the dense urban environments, like Philadelphia, New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Houston. Then we have high band 5G. This comes in many different spectrum bands and is also known as millimeter wave spectrum. But examples include 24 gigahertz, 37 gigahertz, or 39 gigahertz spectrum. And speeds here are the highest. So if you're able to use high band 5G, you can currently access speeds of one gigabit per second and even two gigabits per second with the potential for future improvements up to that 10 gigabits per second level. And if we think about in the US, some of the carriers offering millimeter wave spectrum, this is Verizon's 5G ultra wideband offering and AT&T's 5G plus offering. So what does faster speeds bring us? It's all about instant access to services and applications. Faster speeds will enable more video streaming, including more high definition video streaming. So think 4K and 8K streaming onto your mobile device and better live streaming of video on a mobile basis. So no longer will live streaming from celebrities or social media influencers be in really choppy or grainy quality, it will improve over time with 5G. Another application of having faster speeds is if you wanna download an entire season of your favorite TV show. So users will be able to download a season of Game of Thrones in about four seconds using the fastest speeds under 5G. So moving to the third key area of improvement for 5G from 4G, which is higher density or a greater number of connected devices on the network. So 5G has the ability to support 10 times as many connected devices per square kilometer of network. On a 4G network, only 100,000 devices can simultaneously operate in one square kilometer. In doing so, 4G is able to allow smartphones, smartwatches, and vehicles all in close proximity to be connected to the same tower cell site. In comparison though, on a 5G network, one million devices can simultaneously operate in one square kilometer. Therefore, 5G allows for what's known as the internet of things, or millions of low cost sensors distributed everywhere to be connected to the network. But what does this mean and what does it change? So in 4G, there is a scarcity value associated with a connection to a tower cell site. 
4G technology facilitates 2,000 connections per tower cell site, which causes each individual connection to be scarce in its value. This scarcity in turn drove a need for the carriers like AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile to generate a minimum threshold of revenue for each user that is connected to their tower cell site. So what 5G will do is 5G will offer a 10,000 times increase in the number of connections per tower cell site, which means that the connection itself becomes less scarce. This enables carriers to provide service for each connected device at a much lower price point. Because the scarcity of connections is eliminated, it enables more sensors, more devices, and other Internet of Things devices to be connected to a tower cell site simultaneously. Because of this increase in density, sensors can be cost-effectively used in many different industries, where they could not be cost-effectively before. These include utility management, pipeline management, and traffic management. So moving to the fourth key area of improvement for 5G from 4G, which is added capacity, also known as network throughput. So 5G will increase network throughput, which is the amount of data that goes through a tower cell site by 100 times. Throughput increases drastically with 5G with the possibility of 10 terabits per second per square kilometer. As compared to the 4G network currently, which has throughput of one gigabit per second per square kilometer. So throughput means how fast bits per hertz of spectrum can travel to the network and how much capacity can be taken over a certain point in time or certain spectrum band of network at each frequency. This is important because as data usage is increasing by 30% or more each year, all that extra demand requires more capacity, particularly in high traffic areas like urban environments. So if we think about what the applications for this added capacity brings us, improved network throughput will make phones react faster with a higher quality signal, which will enable users to accomplish more in each session on their phones. Particularly, this is relevant for cloud-based applications, with bits traveling from the cloud to a phone or from the phone back to the cloud. The fifth key area of improvement for 5G from 4G is energy efficiency. So most people believe that 5G requires more consumption of energy and resources, but actually it requires less consumption of energy. By optimizing the radio signals, 5G allows for only 10% of the current energy consumption experienced in 4G networks, meaning energy efficiency of 90%. So this is obviously very important from an environmental standpoint, and also for a consumer, energy savings of 90% result in much longer battery life for your phones. So those are the five main areas of improvement from 4G to 5G. There are a few other areas I just wanted to highlight as well, which also will improve. So this includes spectral efficiency. From a carrier perspective, like AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, average data per user per month continues to increase and therefore it becomes non-economical to continue using 4G. 5G allows these carriers to place three times more bits per hertz of spectrum that they have available. Therefore, 5G will make it three times more efficient for the carriers to utilize their spectrum assets. And they do this through the way that they can allocate and reuse spectrum. This allows the cost per gigabit for these carriers to come down when 5G is employed and for the carrier to continue allowing its users to consume more data. With improved spectral efficiency, it provides a cost benefit to the carrier to replace 4G algorithms with 5G algorithms in the network, and that's exactly what they're doing. Another notable improvement of 5G is reliability, and reliability of uptime in 5G is 99.999% of the time, so three nines in 5G, which is one more nine than what 4G offered. So 4G has 99.99% uptime reliability, which is still very good. And you may be thinking, why does this even matter? Well, 5G becomes particularly important for mission-critical functions, more on the business side. So the improved reliability of 5G translates into only 5 minutes and 15 seconds of possible downtime each year, 
whereas reliability in 4G allows for 52 minutes and 35 seconds of possible downtime each year. So reliability becomes particularly important for industrial applications such as an automated factory that cannot have meaningful delays in its production as a result of network downtime. The next notable improvement to 5G is mobility. And the signal strength in 5G facilitates greater mobility, allowing data to be transmitted to a device that is traveling at 500 kilometers per hour. On 4G, data can be transmitted to a device that is traveling at a maximum speed of 2 to 300 kilometers per hour. And again, you may be thinking, where is this applicable? And so 5G allows data transmission in use cases such as high-speed trains and the future autonomous drones that are traveling at speeds of up to 500 kilometers per hour. So if you've ever been on a high-speed train and not being able to use your phone to connect to the internet, well, perhaps in 5G, you'll be able to do that. And finally, another notable improvement of 5G is again on the business side, and it's within security. So 5G has end-to-end -end security architecture, including stronger subscriber authentication, user privacy, and network security. So those are all the improvements to 5G, which we'll highlight for you in this video. But how does 5G and all this translate to digital infrastructure, which this channel is really all about? So if we recall that the four sectors of digital infrastructure are towers, data centers, fiber, and the combination of small cells and distributed antenna systems. So towers serve as the edge of wireless networks. They are the first point of connection for end user devices like your smartphone and they remain the most cost-efficient manner in which to deploy wireless spectrum, particularly 5G spectrum. In a 5G environment, the equipment deployed on towers, think antennas and radios, will evolve to make use of these latest spectrum bands. Carriers like AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile are already deploying mid- and low-band spectrum on tower sites in order to provide the coverage for 5G today. Next are data centers. And based on all those use cases we just talked about, 5G is expected to drive a sizable increase in the amount of data that is computed and stored, which will ultimately require more data center capacity. With the larger amounts of data created as a result of 5G, data centers provide central locations for using technology, such as artificial intelligence, to harness that data to create new use cases. Next is fiber. And fiber is really the glue that connects the entire digital infrastructure environment together. Fiber is optical equipment that is used to transform data into light. And light travels along the fiber thread and is reconverted at the other end of the fiber strand. As more data is produced with 5G, more fiber is needed, as every part of digital infrastructure uses these fiber railroads to move data around. Finally, our small cells and distributed antenna systems. 5G is bringing the need for a significant increase in network density, particularly in dense urban environments and stadiums. In turn, this creates the need for more small cells to be deployed in order to meet that demand. For example, 5G high band or millimeter wave spectrum only travels a thousand feet. This means that in order to cover a one mile radius, five small cell nodes are needed. Towers cannot be built in all environments, particularly dense urban settings, because they're simply too large or not wanted by local residents. Therefore, small cells are the answer. The same thing occurs in densely packed stadiums, malls, and university campuses, and those are where distributed antenna systems really come into focus. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, then please share it with somebody you think might also find it helpful. Consider subscribing to DGTL Infra and visit us at dgtlinfra.com for more of the latest news on digital infrastructure. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and post in the comments telling me which 5G improvement you are most excited about. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.